Moles. What exactly is moles? Moles is meant for counting atoms, just like you use a dozen of eggs. You use a word to denote an amount. And so we say moles is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, or Avogadro's number. This setup using moles is the same as you did in dimensional analysis problems and many of these conversion factors you will have to come up on your own and you'll be using a periodic table but because it's based on dimensional analysis problems it is a word canceling game so remember when you were given 25 inches in a dimensional analysis you had to find a conversion factor in the back of your book so that you could set it up so that the words would cancel out and this assured you that the setup was correct and that you could clearly see what your units were for your final answer. It's done the same way, except you will not be looking these up in the back of the book. You'll have to be coming up with these conversion factors. Let's take a look at how to develop these conversion factors. There's some facts. Fact number one says a mole of an element is equal to the atomic mass of the element. Fact number two says one mole of any element has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, or Avogadro's number. And so if we were to look at aluminum, we would see that a mole of aluminum has an atomic mass of 26.98 grams, and therefore the mole of aluminum has that many atoms in it. But because I keep saying this is like dimensional analysis, dimensional analysis has a numerator and a denominator. So taking rule number one, I wrote it with a numerator and a denominator, and obviously you could flip that the other way. And using rule number two, this is what it would look like with a numerator and a denominator set up in a problem. And what this is saying is if I was to weigh exactly 26.98 grams of aluminum, which is its atomic mass, pretend these are aluminum atoms, then I would have exactly one mole of aluminum. And in this mole of aluminum, I would be looking at these amount of atoms of aluminum. All right, here's another example, visual picture of what a mole of these elements look like of carbon, sulfur, mercury, and iron. And using that same concept, I have a numerator and a denominator comparing what one mole of an element weighs to its atomic mass. As how many grams of lithium is contained in 125 moles of lithium? So here's 125 moles of lithium. I'm using the first two rules. A mole of any element is equal to its atomic mass. A mole of any element has Avogadro's number of atoms in it. My mantra is, if it's not in moles, get it to moles. That will always be your first step. Luckily, we started in moles, so we don't have to change it to moles. And because they're looking for how many grams, I'm going to use rule number one. And just like in dimensional analysis, I have to make sure I write these so that the words cancel out. And not only the words cancel out, but the substances cancel out. When you do stoichiometry, you will not be talking about the same compound that you started with. You'll end up with a totally new compound. Right now, these are st staying in the same elements and with the same compounds, but it will change when you do stoichiometry. Taking the time and canceling out these words, these are my answers. They want to know how many moles this is. And using my only two rules that I know right now, I've written them down at the bottom. But again, if it's not in moles, I have to get it to moles. So I notice I'm starting in grams. I'm going to take a look at something down here that has grams in it. This one does. A mole of any element is equal to its atomic mass. I'm going to put it in there again so that the words and the substance cancel out. And here's my answer. Again, start with what you're given. You're only using these two rules. Is it in moles? Yes, it is. I don't have to get it to moles. Now I'm looking for how many atoms, and I notice that rule number two equates moles and atoms. So I'm going to put that into the equation in such a way so that the moles cancel out. This has an exponent function to it. This is important that you put it into your calculator. We should exactly get this answer. If you get times 10 to the 23rd instead of to the 24th, you are putting Avogadro's number in wrong. You're putting in times 10 times 10 to the 23rd. If you're not getting the exponent, you're not recognizing when your calculator is telling you it's an exponent. So if you see this large number in your equation, there's nothing else canceling out that exponent, your answer should have an exponent in it. 
it's not in moles so we got to get it to moles the only thing that has atoms in it is rule number two so a mole of any element is equal to Avogadro's number of atoms canceling out the words I will be left with this unit this is very important you put this setup into your calculator because it is an exponent in the denominator most of the times you're going to have to actually put this number the whole one in a separate parentheses by itself for it to see the calculation correct I can also visually check to make sure that my calculator did this correct because if I have an exponent in the numerator and I have an exponent in the denominator it is a minus uh, property so it's almost like 24 minus 23 so these are pretty close to each other so I may not get an exponent or a very very small exponent when I do this if you're getting something like 4.75 times 10 to the 45th it's because you're not putting X the parentheses around your exponent in the denominator figure out what your calculator needs because they're all different again start with what you're given if it's not in moles get it to moles so here I'm going to use rule number one a mole of an element is equal to its atomic mass alright so mole of an element equals its atomic mass you cancel out some people can only do one conversion at a time they cannot string two or three conversions in a row if that's who you are then that's fine but realize every time that you do just one conversion at a time you round and so your answer may look slightly different than the answers given it should be close but it can look slightly different and so after students who are like that will take the answer after one conversion and start another problem converting now moles of carbon to atoms of carbon and in here then to convert that to atoms a mole of an element is equal to Avogadro's number of atoms using these first two rules here we go again start with what you're given not in moles get it to moles We're gonna have to use one of these down here on the bottom do you see which one? I'm going to have to use the one that has atoms in it. A mole of any element has Avogadro's number of atoms. And after I cancel those out, you can see then I will be left with moles of gold. But it's asking for how much does it weigh. I have to use, also use rule number one, where a mole of an element equals its atomic mass. All right, and when I cancel those words out, I'm left with grams of gold again if you only can do one conversion at a time I would have got an answer after this conversion and then I had to tack it on to that one here is my answer practice again because it has an exponent in the denominator make sure you put your parentheses around here check it because this is a minusing effect so it's like 22 minus 23 it's like to the negative one so I really probably shouldn't have an exponent